Hi, and welcome back to the WCPS Video Repository. Today we're going to take a second look at AirServer. As a reminder, AirServer is a program that you install on your MacBook, and it's similar to Reflector in that both AirServer and Reflector allow you to display or mirror your iPad on your MacBook. This will be quite helpful when your students are working on their iPads and need to show their work to the class. Okay, to get started, we need to open AirServer. The quickest way to open it is to come to the Spotlight Search and type in AirServer. Okay, give it just a second and it will populate. And it is our top hit, so I'm going to double click AirServer to open it. And you'll find that there's not a lot of difference. On your menu bar, you now have AirServer. So you have the menu and you have a window menu. We're going to click on Air Server and choose Preferences. You'll see there are five different tabs you can click on. General, Audio, Display, Mirroring, and Advanced. We'll start with Advanced. Under the Advanced tab, you can check for updates. You can automatically check for updates as well. I usually keep this checked and every time I open up my MacBook it does a quick check. You can automatically launch AirServer when you start up your computer. You can keep AirServer showing in your dock. And as you can see, I have done that. And finally, you can use the animated full screen mode. Please know that this mode runs a little bit slower, but it does work with the native Mac OS environment. Under the advanced tab, you could also uninstall AirServer if you needed to. On our next tab, we have mirroring, and I usually leave the default retina high quality. If you have a slower network because you have many iPads that are at using the network to use AirServer, you may wish to check mark slow network. That decreases the refresh rate, so it uses less bandwidth. Our next tab is display. Again, I leave that set to the default of color LCD. For audios, I use the system default. And on the general tab, there are a few things you can change. The first thing is the computer name. The computer name is what is going to show up on your student iPads as they try to connect to your MacBook. If you haven't changed this and it's simply your serial number, you'll want to do this at this do that at this time. It's pretty simple. Open up your system preferences. On your third row down, come to the end and click on sharing and change your name here. Um, I would suggest you leave the serial number in the name, but start off your computer name with your first initial followed by your last name. You could also be Mrs. Peer or if something similar for you. When you're done changing it, simply close the window and this should update fairly easily. Next we have password. You can have no password on here, which means a student can connect at will to your MacBook. This is what I usually leave mine set to, but I work in the elementary schools where this is not a problem. I do understand that many secondary teachers use the fixed password. And what this does is it allows you to create a passcode that they're gonna have to type in in order to connect to your MacBook. You can have an on-screen code that, they'll, that will pop up that they'll have to type in. Or, if you choose Ask Me, they're going to have to ask for permission to get on. Um, you'll probably want to either have no password or fixed password. And you can change your fixed password as often as you'd like. Next, we have Show QR Code. If you click this button, it'll pop up a QR code for you. If you print this out and display it in a few places in the room, students can scan this with their QR reader on their iPad and connect directly to your Air Server. Finally, it shows the Wi-Fi that we're connected to. I'm connected to the WCPS network. Please know that in order for Air Server to work, your students will also have to be connected to the WCPS network. Um, or you can both be connected to the Access Network. Just as long as you're both on the same network, it should work for you. Finally, you do have a Help button in the bottom right-hand corner. 
and if you click on that it opens up the air server troubleshooting page okay in our next session we're going to talk about how your students connect to your air server so please make sure you have your computer name ready to go and I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me.